Though it launched in 1993, Canary has roots that run much deeper than that, as deep as the 1980s, when hair was big and the burgeoning vision of an information economy was bigger. Bien que Canary a été inauguré en 1993, son histoire remonte beaucoup plus loin. Jusque dans les années 1980, les chevelures étaient grandes et la vision naissante d'une économie de l'information plus grande encore. In the early part of that decade, the greatest challenge facing research and development communities wasn't a lack of information. It was a lack of sustainable, forward-thinking solutions for storing and, above all, sharing that information. If you can believe it, and some of us remember it, though we'll never say so, data was shipped by tape. But the landscape was beginning to shift. Researchers' imaginations fixed on the promise of a national, high-performance information-sharing network that would link centers of innovation and discovery across Canada. In 1981, the USA addressed this need with BitNet, which leveraged IBM technology for point-to-point -point email and file transfers, like a virtual mail truck making one stop at a time. Four years later, Canada followed with its own version of BitNet, called Net North. BC was the first to establish a provincial research and education network in 1987, and Ontario and Quebec soon followed. In the wake of this success, Industry Canada began to investigate the feasibility of a high-speed C2C network. The National Research Council followed suit by committing $2 million in startup funding, and a team of innovators and designers used the back of a napkin, property of the Airport Holiday Inn in Toronto, to sketch an early version of the 56 kilobyte network that would launch as CANET in October 1990, with oversight from the newly founded CANET Networking Incorporated. At last, Canada was on the way to using internet technology to link all our major research universities with nodes in each province. But by this time, the USA was five years ahead of Canada in terms of network speed and connectivity. And without a clear vision, we would have likely have fallen further behind. To stimulate our country's appetite for development and innovation, we needed two special ingredients. A surefire approach for advancing and running the research network, and a strategy for facilitating technological development and industry initiatives. The answer, we quickly saw, was to create a single, cohesive organization to provide those ingredients and support Canada's vision of the future. Enter Canary. The industry-led, not-for-profit consortium launched in 1993, designed to leverage technology and experience from both the private and public sector. Canary's visionary founders realized that the best way to spur Canada's development of an information society was to invite end users from as many different communities as possible to the inventor's workshop. Ce consortium sans but lucratif, piloté par l'industrie, a vu le jour en 1993. Il a été conçu pour exploiter au maximum la technologie et l'expérience des secteurs publics et privés. Les visionnaires qui ont fondé Canary ont cependant vite compris que la meilleure façon de favoriser l'avènement d'une société de l'information au Canada serait d'inviter les utilisateurs de tous les milieux possibles à entrer dans cette famille d'inventeurs. In 1994, Canary leapt towards this goal with the launch of vigorous programs designed to give cultural, educational, and private sector projects a healthy shot in the arm. All of this momentum culminated in 1997, a flagship year for Canary. CANET Networking Inc. was sold to private carriers, and Canary subsequently became operator of the CANET 2 network. This calculated move meant that Canary became the shepherd of the Advanced Research and Education Backbone Network Testbed of Canada. Under Canary's guidance, CANET 3 was soon launched as the world's fastest research network and the first to deploy new optical technology for an all-broadband network. Unlike any other country in the world, Canada now had a network designed expressly to handle internet data. With Canary's leadership, we went from trailing the USA to showing them how it's done. Sous la direction de Canary, CANET 3, a vite pris forme pour devenir le réseau de recherche le plus rapide de la planète et le premier à déployer une nouvelle technologie optique qui étendrait la largeur de bande à la totalité du réseau. À l'inverse des autres nations, le Canada possédait, désormais, un réseau spécifiquement adapté aux données circulant sur Internet. 
Grâce au leadership de Canary, le Canada, qui traînait jusqu'à la derrière les États-Unis, a montré comment procéder à ses voisins du Sud. In its first decade, Canary had devoted more resources to the advance of software applications than to the development of the network itself. And the results were explosive. More than 225 projects were supported in Canary's first 10 years. Canary was everywhere, facilitating projects in every field you could imagine, from digital libraries through new media and mobile applications. Genuine excitement was building from coast to coast. Thanks in part to Canary's visionary role in a decade's worth of groundbreaking programs and services, the rest of the world was now waiting to see what Canada would do next. Canary too was looking towards the future. They were eager to find new ways to apply what they had learned through years of incubating e-health, e-business and e-learning initiatives. The biggest lesson of all? That collaborative development works. With this wisdom as its compass, Canary turned towards Canada's research community to offer a similarly invigorating advantage. In 2007, Canary used a portion of its funding to establish a program that spurred the development of a new paradigm in digital discovery. The program supported the development of powerful research software platforms that allowed researchers across the country to access research resources and tools and collaborate via a simple web interface. These platforms spanned a range of research domains, everything from traffic management to remote medical education to high energy physics, and created a new exemplar for innovative digital discovery. Today, the technology may look very different from its origins 20 years ago, but Canary's priorities have remained constant from the beginning to spur the development and adoption of transformative digital technologies for Canada's research, education, and innovation communities transformations that have a lasting impact on all Canadians. La technologie actuelle peut sembler fort différente de ce qu'elle était au départ il y a 20 ans. Pourtant, les priorités de Canary sont demeurées les mêmes. Faciliter le développement et l'adoption de technologies numériques transformatrices dans les milieux canadiens de la recherche, de l'éducation et de l'innovation et engendrer des transformations qui auront un impact durable sur la population du pays. This steady vision has helped to shape Canada's role as an international leader in end-to-end -end high performance connectivity and has established a legacy of programs that continue to connect and invigorate our education, research and business communities. In short, we've come a long way from that napkin sketch in the airport holiday inn. But the best and most exciting fact is that we have built an incredibly powerful base from which to spark new world-class discovery and innovation that will impact generations to come.